G'day everyone, Artist Wayne here reporting for duty and heading to the Victorian High Country! And this is exactly how it went down. Well, maybe I'll leave out the parts where my bike started to fall apart, but other than that, this is a true account of our epic adventure! Well, as near to true as I can remember, because huge amounts of alcohol were consumed over a five-day period. I left work in the Arvo on the 14th of November, rushed home, had a shower, jumped on the mighty Yamaha WR250R, which was all packed and ready, headed to Sydney, met up with my mate Mad Mal, as we made our way to Mittagong. Had a great feed, got pissed in the pub, woke up the next morning to be greeted by Adrian the Pinup Boy for Amarok Australia. We had breakfast at the Shaggy Cow Cafe and then headed south. We had one more rider to pick up along the way and that was Big Jace the Bodyguard. He had trailed his bike down to Goulburn and met us along the way. Four riders hurtling towards the great unknown. Mad Mal, our chicken-legged tech guy and navigator, riding a 690 KDM. Big Jace the Bodyguard, our strong arm with soft hands mechanic, riding a Kawasaki KLR650. Adrian the pinup boy for Amarok Australia, riding a huge 790 KDM. But I doubt that it'd give him any trouble. He knows how to ride. And it's not like this was going to be an enduro ride. It's an adventure ride! And we were following Mad Mal, so what could possibly go wrong? And in case you're wondering why there are only three bikes there instead of four, that's because we've already lost Adrian, the pinup boy for Amarok Australia! But don't worry, we'd find him later on as we made our way to our accommodation at Jindabyne. It had been one hell of a huge day. And it was time to head to the pub for a feed and drink until we were thrown out. The next morning we were up bright and early having breakfast and I have to admit we were working on my bike before leaving Jindabyne and heading over the mountain. We were now crossing the Murray River at Tom Grogan and hitting the dirt trails. It's also where we met up with some of the local enduro riders who actually invited us to ride with them. But alas, we were always strapped for time. We were after all on a mad mal ride and our accommodation was booked in Dargo in the Victorian high country located in the northeast of Victoria. An area that features national parks, Victoria's highest mountains, lakes, snow, resorts, vineyards, and a rich history including gold discovery, cattlemen, and bush rangers. The countryside is absolutely beautiful and it's all eye candy to an artist like myself. Yeah, these two were pushing him up the hill. Holy shit. And it wasn't long after saying farewell to our enduro mates that I'd be working on my WR250 once again. But the problems were only minor. Yes, I admit I should have used Loctite when preparing my bike for this epic journey. And thank God I brought a spare gear lever because if Big Jace didn't help me fix that, I reckon the boys would have left me behind.
interrupt this broadcast to bring you some gnarliness. Here we go, boys and girls, our first steep hill, our first difficult track. This is the hill on the Powers Gully track near King Cassilis Mine. <laughs> but don't worry, I'm keeping this one short because I'm going to devote a whole video to this hill climb. That looks pretty. Look at it. everyone's leading forward. That's right, boys and girls, the next video will be solely about that hill and the terrible time poor Adrian the pit up boy had climbing it. Long, long, dusty stints on the bike only made you appreciate the size of this beautiful country we live in. And our accommodation in Dargo was perfect. Mad Mal had outdone himself. We had our own house. And that night the pup went off like a frog in a sock. The Adventure Boys were in the house. G'day to Nurse Shirley, Mama Cass and the twins. You girls know who you are. The next morning we were up as early as possible leaving Dargo after fueling ourselves and our bikes. Today we would need to put our game faces on. The boys would certainly need a keen sense of adventure to tackle this iconic track which is listed as one of the most challenging in the country. Because we were riding up one giant mother hill today. Boys and girls, I give you... The Billy Goat Bluff Track! Track difficulty level is high! And considered one of the hardest hills, not only in Victoria, but all of Australia. And for good reason. The Billy Goat Bluff Track is listed as one of Australia's most dangerous and challenging roads. The track is extremely narrow and edged with cliff faces, making passing oncoming vehicles a challenge. Especially for the enduro riders and four-wheel drivers trying to get past Adrian and his big 790 KDM. But again, I'll cut this hill short because I'm going to devote a whole entire video to the hill climb that just keeps going and going and going. And the funny exploits of our good mate, Adrian, the pin-up boy for Amarok Australia. Once you reach the top of Billy Goat's views are absolutely breathtaking. But we'd already spent far too much time getting Adrian and his stupid bike up. Hell, we didn't even get to see the pinnacles. And I know I keep repeating myself like a broken record, but we were on a mad mal adventure ride. We were now hurtling through the bush towards the beautiful Victorian town of Lycola, where we met up with the great folks at the Lycola Caravan Park and General Store. And when they asked us where we were headed, and more importantly where we were staying the night, and Mal told them we were heading towards Crate's Hut, and then on to the town of Bright, well they near fell over laughing. Their next question was, did you bring sleeping bags? You see, it was already late in the afternoon. But when you're born knowing everything there is to know, like Mad Mal, you don't need to listen to the locals. What could they possibly know that Mad Mal did it? So off we headed, back into the great unknown quietly wondering to ourselves whether we would get out of the high country alive.
Son of a bitch Son truck. Son of a bitch truck. Woo! And as the afternoon shadows grew longer and longer, I noticed Mad Mal's eyes growing wider and wider. Every now and again he'd shake his head and I'd hear him mutter, We've got so far to go. And I started to think to myself, Oh dear, the locals were right. Are you joking? Is that it there? Yeah. Oh well, I guess it was here that I was resigned to the fact there'd be no dinner that night, no drinks, and perhaps there was a, a good chance that we'd be sleeping in the bush. But who cares? We were on an adventure ride! We were in the high country, and it was absolutely beautiful. Come to think of it, if worse came to worse, we could always sleep at Craig's Hut. By now you're probably thinking, what the bloody hell is Craig's Hut? Well, it's a piece of Australian film history. It sits high atop Mount Stirling, around 51 kilometres from Mansfield. The hut was originally constructed as the set for the 1982 film The Man from Snowy River, which incidentally is based on a famous poem by Australian poet Banjo Patterson. Bushfires ravaged the hut in 2006, but it was rebuilt and reopened to the public two years later. It's easily the most famous of the high country huts, and it offers stunning views and is one of the region's most photographed landmarks. The big question was, would we get to see it before dark? Well, when we did finally arrive at Craig's hut, it was between 6.30 and 7pm. The folks at Lycola were right. Actually, they were wrong, because it took us even longer than what they said it would take. And we still had another four hours riding. And that's when Big Jace the bodyguard came up with an idea that we should ride through the bush in the dark because we might be able to save some time getting to Bright. Where are we? We're at Myrtleford at uh, 10 to 11. Just fueling up the bikes. The way we roll. How are you going, Adrian? Hey. How are you going? Do you have anything to say? No. You sure? <laughs> Man. <laughs> Oh dear, oh dear, you just can't make that kind of stuff up. We arrived at Bright at 11.30. We had ridden 15 hours, but when we arrived we were giggling like little kids. The following morning we bid farewell to Big Jace the bodyguard. He was slamming it all the way home. Mad Mal, the pinup boy and I had breakfast in the beautiful town of Bright before making our way at a nice leisurely pace to Yass. That's where wife Jackie had organised some awesome accommodation for us. 
We had dinner at a restaurant, drank a little too much, and the following day we would be returning home. It had been an absolutely epic adventure. And I recommend riding in the Victorian high country to everyone. In fact, I can't wait to get back down there. I'm artist Wayne Dowson, and thanks for watching everyone.